and welcome to SA Weekender. Today I'm at Maggie Beer's farm in the beautiful Barossa Valley. If you haven't been here in a while, well, you are in for a treat because an exciting new restaurant and experience centre has recently opened. I'll be taking you for a tour a little later on, but first, here's what else we have for you today. We find out why the international fashionistas are clamouring for Adelaide designs. And Ali Clark shares her top local picks. Don't, don't tell them, don't tell them. But first, here's Ron. It's big country few of us ever get to see. Out here on the Blue Range Gorge driving tour, a local's a must if you want to truly comprehend the vastness of the Southern Flinders Ranges. With the right guide, you can tap into a rich vein of yarns hidden away in these many gorges and ravines. It's a big day, so Nick Bailey and I start out early. First stop, the ruins of Kanaka Station, and it's a tale of struggle and loss. Big dreams, big changes. When heading north from Corn to iconic destinations like Rawnsley Bluff and Wilpena Pound, make sure you pull off at the Kanaka Homestead site. It says so much about the struggles undertaken by a committed few to make a go of it out here. This is the wool shed and shearing shed. You've got a 24 stand shed here. 40,000 sheep shorn by hand just up the hill. The Kanaka homestead, 70 men working on the property and the houses and the houses to accommodate them. Drive around Kanaka homestead and its wool shed and you're struck by the vastness of this outback undertaking. Only a few years into the establishment of the South Australian colony and some were dreaming big as wool prices soared. But with big dreams came some big falls. They were pushed up here beyond Goiter's line, made to farm intensively. The government of the day caused that to occur and the leases were so uh, hostile that most either walked off the land and abandoned it or they were driven to ruin or they died here. The cemeteries here hold some terrible, sad headstones. It's heartbreakingly beautiful country with ruins scattered throughout the landscape, each a memorial in stone to a family forced to pack up and leave. Many believed the rain would follow the plough. They were wrong. These are the remains of the Simmonston pub on the Wallachra Plain, otherwise known as the Field of Broken Dreams. When the Closest Settlement Acts were passed, farmers and their families came here en masse to grow wheat, and for a time, they were very successful. They experienced some bumper crops, but then a series of savage droughts wiped them out. As you drive the back roads between Corn and Hawker, an epic story of struggle and pain opens up before you. Keep an eye out for this gravesite. It commemorates the life of the man who first took up the Kanaka run. He was the son of a Scottish nobleman. Hugh Proby had it in 1851. He lasted about a year before he was tragically um, drowned on the Wallachra Creek, running his first mob of cattle to the Adelaide market. They shipped this one and a half ton slab of granite out from Scotland and using a bullock dray, they hauled it to Hugh Proby's final resting place. Not far from here, the hard work of early settlers is still put to good use. At the start to Nick Bailey's Blue Range Gorge property sits an 1840 stone cottage. It's the perfect base from which to explore this impressive country. And when you do, make sure Nick takes you to the dramatic finish to his Blue Range Gorge adventure. So Nick, where the hell are we? We're on Blue Range Station, north of the Dutchman Stern. What's the reaction of those who come on your tours when you bring them to a spot like this? Wow, because there's very few places that you can see a 360 view and they are high enough. And this is the highest country until you get to Wilpena Pound itself. It's just so scenic. Epic country with epic stories. To experience this country in all its glory, jump on board a Blue Range Gorge tour with guide Nick Bailey. For details, head to his website. Coming up, breakfast with Ali. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Ali Clark. You might wake up to me in the mornings. I do the ABC Breakfast Radio Show, and Adelaide's been home for our family since 2000. For us, it's myself, my husband Matt, who's involved in football, and then there is eight-year-old Eloise, six-year-old Samuel, and then little Madeline Maxine, or Mad Max, as we all call her. And we have a Kelpie cross dog called Little Bean the Third, and some chickens. Oh, and budgies. We're gathering more animals as we go, <laughs> but it's just brilliant. It's um. I mean, any place that you can live in and be in the hills in the morning and down by the beach in the afternoon, I just love it. If we ever get some time together, we head straight to the Florio. That's it for us. Yeah, down to Karakalinga, Normanville, Second Valley, Rapid Bay, just along that stretch. Absolutely love going down there. I think. You know, and I grew up on the Sunshine Coast and Brisbane. You know, if those people up there knew the beaches we had down here, don't, don't tell them, don't tell them. Well, if we don't have time to get out of the city, then pretty much the central markets is the place for us. Although having three kids makes it a little bit crazy. So we normally run their energy off at uh, Princess Mary Elizabeth Park. If you haven't been there on South Terrace, oh, it's great. They've got trampolines in the ground and, and then Benayathan Park. We're, we're very up on all the parks that you can go to. I brought you here. This is the inclusive cafe down at Minda, just down at Brighton. Not only do they do and give you everything that a cafe should, but it's actually an inclusive one. So it means that the clients of Minda come and they work, they look after it. They also involve students from Brighton High. They come and do work experience here. It's a social enterprise. So any money that they get goes back into helping people with disabilities and all abilities. I've been an ambassador for Minda for a number of years. Um, for those that don't know, my brother has an intellectual disability, so this is how um, I love staying involved in the community. And, yeah. <laughs> so often you hear about the drain of people leaving South Australia. Well, we're actually importing people in. My parents are going to move down from Brisbane and my brother will come down, so... I mean, this is home. After the break, a new venture for a Barossa family dynasty. don't always want to follow in their parents' footsteps, but in the case of Maggie Beer, her family is behind her all the way. Welcome to the farm, where Maggie's daughter Ellie has opened the door to a whole new chapter. If ever anyone was born to be in the business they're in, it's Ellie Beer. Her first job was working for her mum at her legendary pheasant farm restaurant when she was a little girl. I started waitressing at eight, but I reckon just a little bit before that, I helped in the kitchen um, doing the dishes. We have this pull down dishwasher and I'm quite competitive by nature. So it used to be called racing the Hobart. You had 60 seconds to pack and unpack, but it's been more than 30 years. The original restaurant closed in 1993 and Ellie moved into the catering business for 20 years. Now she's back and has transformed the former function centre into an eatery. Open, modern and relaxed, diners overlook stunning views of the property's iconic Blue Lake. Believing food and service to be equally important, she wants people to feel this is their home too. You're pleasing people, you're making them happy, but you're delivering a product that just makes people feel good. And that's a buzz. It's a creative process, you know, it's like painting, but you get to eat and, and then you get to have wine. So it's really a win across the board. Connected to the restaurant is another creative hub, a gin school that's run by Ellie's husband, Brett Durand. Brett used to be an engineer, but today he's having much more fun teaching people the joys of gin making. What we're going to do is let you loose on all of our botanicals. Really? You're going to let me loose <laughs> on these? Absolutely. <laughs> to find your flavours. Yeah. Because it's about your nose, it's about your palate, it's yeah. about your gin and okay. what we're going to build. All right. Searching the world for unusual botanicals, his advice is simple. If it smells good, it'll taste good. They're all really subtle, aren't they? Mm. This yeah. could go terribly wrong. It's like a fun but science no, experiment. No, there are, there are no wrong answers. Great. Next, it's over to the distilling bench where I weigh and grind my ingredients and put them into a muslin bag. If you want to do the honours, you just pop yeah, your flavours right. in. 
I'll get the steel ready to go for distillation. Yeah. And while I do that, you can go sit down and have some lunch. Oh, that's it? That's it. You're ready to go. That sounds wonderful. Excellent. Thank you, Sarah. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks. While my special blend brews away, the restaurant is absolutely buzzing. In the kitchen is Tim Burke, who was previously the executive chef at the Southern Ocean Lodge on KI. Service please. His talent for constantly surprising Ellie suits her to a tee. Tim cooks like Maggie cooked, it's freestyle. We won't know until about half 11 of a morning what exactly the menu is. We've got farmers that drop things into us. They'll just appear on the menu the following day. It's beautiful and that's exactly what used to happen with mum and dad in the 80s in the pheasant farm. We're back to that. Oh yum, that's delicious. After an incredible lunch, it's back to Brett to label my very own bottle. Goldie's gold label. It's got a ring to it. Absolutely it does. <laughs> Great name. When can I drink this? It's best to leave it for a couple of days. It'll come into itself because it's gone through a bit of a shock at the moment. Let it settle, give it a week. Okay. Try it with friends. A week! Oh. I know, it's torture, <laughs> but you've got to do it. You've got to do it. Give it a chance Damn. to live. All right. Hello, Dietrich, Ellie speaking. With her lifelong ties to the farm, Ellie is back where she belongs and looking to the future. You're at our table, you're at our home. It speaks of us, our, our history, and everything we stand for in food and SA, and, you know, as it turns out, the generations coming through, longevity. The Farm Eatery is open for lunch only. For more details or to book a lesson at the Durand Distillery, just head to their website. The entire beer family would love to see you. This for you. I love Next, it. we meet the guru of SA style. I mean, how chic does that look on you? I love it. It's not only Adelaide's small bar and foodie scene that's become truly vibrant in recent years, but our fashion scene as well. South Australian designers are making waves on the international stage. To get the scoop, I'm meeting the guru of SA style, Chris Contos. Chris. Hey, gorgeous. How are you? Really well. How are you? Good, good. I'm super excited to yeah. head down the mall today. Yeah, I can't wait to check out some great SA designers. And guys, we're really lucky because Chris Contos is the best person to do it with. Yay. Are we ready? Yep, let's, let's go. go. In demand around the world as a fashion consultant, Chris is the creative director of the Adelaide Fashion Festival. A talented designer himself, his clothes have been worn by the likes of Kendall Jenner and his enthusiasm for our homegrown creatives is contagious. So what have we got here, Chris? This is the amazing Akla. Mm -hmm. So Julie Retorto and Kath Forth are the designers. It's just the hottest brand at the moment. Like every celebrity is wearing this. I mean, Katy Perry, it was her go-to brand in, on her Australian tour. Um, as you can see, it's like mask femme. It's gorgeous cuts. The girls work so hard on their fits and fabrication. Um, it's just such a really beautiful um, South Australian brand. So another amazing South Australian brand, Finders. This was the first brand to start at the Oz Labels Group. But how oh, cute is right. this as well? Yeah, gorgeous. Just fun really and girly, fun. lots of prints, really easy to wear. What oh, that think? is so you. I love it. <laughs> I love the buttons. Yeah, the buttons are chic. In need of refreshment, we've come to one of Chris's favourite haunts, Sean's Kitchen. <laughs> so this is how it's done? It's so Instagrammable. Look at how yummy that looks. Yeah, my. Anyway, sorry. We've really become, Chris, the, the voice and I guess the face of fashion in SA. How did you get started in the industry? Oh my God, well I started like every good um, fashion person in the industry. I started on the floor, fashion floor. So I worked at Axel Beers, which is a really cool menswear um, business. And I worked in the hire department. And I started by like, cleaning the toilets. <laughs> So who are some of the local-based designers that are really exciting you at the moment? I mean, there's so many exciting ones. I mean, for example, uh, Georgie Collections is an amazing dress brand that's coming out of South Australia. They've just dressed Jennifer Lopez. The amazing girls from Akla mm -hmm. um, are nailing it with Beyonce. Just nailing the US market. Back on the hunt at DJ's, Chris can't wait to show me the work of milliner Sylvie Earle, who hand-makes exquisite headwear. What could be more perfect for spring racing season? I mean, she's had headpieces on Edwina McCann, um, regular clients for her are Emma Freeman, like racing um, yeah. royalty. royalty. Yeah. I mean, how chic does that look on you? I love mm. it. 
His next pick is global leather accessory powerhouse, The Daily Edited, whose co-founder, Elise Tran, grew up right here. And what about The Daily Edited? What an amazing success story. It's so fabulous and such a great concept. I mean, we both got our phone cases from here. We do, Our yeah. personalised monogramming. Just in case I forget my name. <laughs> Other huge international success stories include the on-trend brands of Australian fashion labels and the divine couture creations of Paolo Sebastian. Determined to live in Adelaide, designer Paul Vasilev has set up an atelier that rivals that of any in Paris. He's transformed the idea of couture and the fact that you can stay in South Australia, live here and be super successful internationally. I mean, he's a designer everyone wants to be dressed by and I mean, he's done it all here out of South Australia. So there's so many different amazing um, designers here in South Australia that are just killing it. Yeah, they're really making their mark, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Attention Style Mavens, the Adelaide Fashion Festival will be held from the 17th to the 21st of October. With gorgeous runway shows, long lunches and inspiring masterclasses, check their website for details. Tickets sell out fast, so be quick and be seen. What do you Beautiful. think? Beautiful, love it. Love. <laughs> Well, that's it for today's show. But before we go, be sure to tune in this week for a very special look at South Australia featuring the best things to see and do from around the state. You won't want to miss it. Streaming on South Australia's Facebook page and southaustralia.com. Tune in for a five-day journey across South Australia. It all starts at 4pm tomorrow. It promises to serve up a smorgasbord of sensational South Australian vistas and experiences. Make sure you get the popcorn and settle in. Now, here's what we have for you next time. We go rolling on the river with our proud Mary. And after years in the wilderness, one of SA's best known wildlife sanctuaries begins a new chapter. Oh, look, there we go. Oh, is that a good old snooze up there? That's next Sunday at 5.30. Hope you can join us then. Bye for now.